Hey, what's up, guys? It's Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online, and today I want to show you how I edit my toms to get a tighter sound. All right, now, if this is your first time here on this channel, subscribe and click the notification bell so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. All right, so now let's jump into it. A few weeks ago, I did a drum recording and I actually have the link here right on top if you want to take a look. So what I did first was to do a balance of all of my tracks. So I started with my drums and then I did the same for the entire song. I just wanted to have a general rough mix of the song with the raw tracks just before adding uh, plugins like compression and EQ and stuff. So before doing the mixing process, I just needed to balance everything out. Once this stage is done, I focus on my drums, then I bring in the vocals, the bass, and so on. So um, if we look at the drum sound right now, let's just have a quick listen to what we have. And what I focus on is the Tom and Floor track, okay? Because um, these tracks usually gives me a lot of bleed. And um, sometimes the bleed is not going to help me during my mix, especially when I add some compression and EQ and stuff, and I do some processing on these two tracks, the Tom and the Floor. If I have too much bleed, that can cause some problems. So let's have a quick listen in solo to what we have as far as the bleed goes. Okay, there's a lot of resonance going on, and that is a bit normal, okay? So you don't have to worry about that too much. The, the question that I need to ask myself is, do I want that resonance and that, that bleed into my recording, into my mix? Now, in a pop or a rock song like this one, I tend to bring the, uh, the bleed at the lowest possible or even get rid of it, okay? So I'm, this is what I'm going to do today. So if we listen to the entire mix, the rough mix without any plugins, and I just I'm just gonna bypass the Tom and the Floor track. You'll hear the difference. Okay, you hear a major difference when I when I mute them out, you know? I'm afraid with compression and stuff and all the processing, it is gonna blur my sound, okay? So by muting them out, by getting rid of that bleed, the sound already is a bit more sharp, tighter, punchier, and this is what I need for this type of song. Now we're talking about a rock song. Now, if I was mixing jazz, that would probably be different. I would use a different approach. The toms and the bleed of the entire drum kit would be part of the sound in a jazz production. But in this case, in a rock song, I want my drums to be tight, punchy, and uh, that's why I'm just gonna get rid of that bleed and have more control over the toms. So uh, to do so, my first option, is to use a gate. Okay, so I'm gonna just solo my tom and I'm gonna use activate that gate. This is a stock plugin, a stock gate out of Cubase. You can use any gate you want. Okay, um, now the settings I have right now are, are working for this track, so let's listen to what that does. Okay, so now uh, what the gate does basically is it opens the door and it closes the door. So when the door is open, the gate is open, basically the uh, the sound goes through, okay? And when it's closed, it doesn't uh, let anything go. Anything determined by the threshold. Okay, so that setting, that threshold setting is very important. If I bring it up, if I bring my, my threshold way up, this is what I'm gonna get. Okay. Now it's gonna detect way more sound. The door is gonna be a bit more sensitive to what's coming in. So if I want the um, the threshold to be a bit less sensitive, I need to bring it down a bit. Okay, so let's listen to this other part. I'm just gonna bring that down a bit. Let, you know, let's bring it way down. And just to show you the example of what that will sound like. Nothing, okay? So now it was like not sensitive enough, okay? So I just need to bring my threshold higher 
and find the sweet spot. And I think that spot is good. Okay, that's pretty good. Next, what I need to pay attention to is the attack time and the release time. Basically, the attack is the amount of time it's going to take uh, for the door to open, okay, the gate to uh, be wide open. So in this case, I want it to open as fast as possible. Since I want it to be quick, I bring my attack time to the lowest setting, um, which in this case is 0.1 milliseconds. The release time is the opposite, okay? It's the amount of time it's going to take for the door to close. So this is what you need to pay attention to. Now the hold setting here will actually just uh, leave the door open for X amount of time, okay, before it hits the release time. So um, that's basically it. I'm just going to bring that down a bit and listen to what that sounds like. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm doing the same with the floor. I'm just going to activate that gate. All right, so now... My gates are activated, and this is what it sounds in the context of the drum mix. I'm just going to bring that closer. Pretty cool. Way more tighter. Um, I kind of like that. So that's one option. The gate option is a very good option. You can use a gate and problem solved. Uh, that takes care of getting rid of the bleed. I also use a gate on the kick track usually uh, when there's a lot of bleed. If I don't have enough, a lot of bleed, I just leave it as is. Uh, now for Tom and Floor, um, I, I use gates once in a while, but I mainly just do everything manually. So it gives me a bit more control. So let me show you what I mean by doing that manually. I'm just going to select these tracks. Now what I'm doing is basically, I don't even need to select them. Uh, I'm just going to use my scissors and create some events out of the hits and the bleed. Okay, so it's a long, it's a longer process for sure. Okay, but that is going to help me a lot if I don't want to get rid of 100% of the bleed. Okay, I'm just going to. All right, once I'm done, I'm selecting everything. I click on X. So I you know, get some crossfades between these, these events. And uh, what I do is I select all the bleed events. And then I group them by clicking on Control G if you're working in Cubase. And if I select one of them, it's going to select them all. And this way I can just bring them down if I want to keep the bleed, but I don't want the bleed to be too present. So let's have a quick listen. Okay, first I'm going to need to shut off the gates. Okay, that's going to be, that's going to help. So you know that gives me a lot of control here on the bleed because the bleed can be an advantage in a way but if it's too disturbing or if it doesn't help my drums to be tighter i'm just gonna mute them or delete them now when i'm done with the amount of bleed that i want to have in my mix i just fine tune my hits i just solo my tom and floor track okay that sounds pretty good if i listen to that part in context Okay. Now, in this case, what I would do would on select on group the bleeds, and I would just fine tune the crossfades. So it, you know the, the transition is a bit smoother. So this is stuff I do. Uh, it is longer for sure, you know, but it's it does a very good job. So this is how I edit my toms to get a tighter sound out of my drums. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. And don't forget to share, to like, and to subscribe if you're new to this channel. All right, guys, until next time, see ya.